Okay, here's our second example of uh, using the graph of a function to solve a quadratic inequality. Um, so here's the uh, inequality that we want to solve, x squared minus 5x plus 3 uh, greater than 0. So um, one side of this inequality is already 0. And uh, that being the case, then we can immediately think of the left-hand side of this inequality as um, the formula for a function. So I'm going to call that function uh, f. So I'm going to rewrite this inequality as um, f of x uh, greater than 0. So um, what this uh, second inequality tells us is that to solve the original quadratic inequality, we're looking for uh, the inputs uh, x to the function f uh, that will give us a matching output greater than uh, 0. And we're going to use the graph of the function f um, to determine uh, what those inputs are. So here's the graph of the function f uh, shown here. And so we can observe on the graph that um, the inputs x, uh, where the matching output is greater than 0, uh, those are going to be uh, the x values outside of uh, the x-intercepts on the graph. So um, any x value to the left of this uh, first x-intercept, um, notice that um, uh, there the graph is above the x-axis. And so that means uh, the matching output for any of these x values to the left of this first x-intercept are going to be positive. In other words, greater than 0. And then by the same token, um, to the right of the second x-intercept, the graph of the function f is also above the uh, x-axis. So again, that tells us that for uh, any x value here uh, greater than the second x-intercept, uh, the matching output value um, uh, from the function f will also be a positive number. In other words, a solution to the inequality. So uh, the solution set to our inequality are going to be um, x values less than uh, the first x-intercept uh, combined with x values greater than uh, the second x-intercept. And again, that's because um, it's this uh, uh, portion of the it's uh, for this portion of the x-axis that the graph of the function f um, is above the x-axis. In other words, um, it's for uh, this portion of the x-axis again outside of the x-intercepts where the matching outputs from the function f are going to be greater than uh, zero. So um, to determine this uh, solution set exactly, uh, I need to find the exact values for these two x-intercepts uh, for the function f. So of course you can do that by uh, taking the formula for the function f, or you can start to do this by taking the formula uh, for the function f and setting that uh, to zero and solving the resulting equation, which is going to be a quadratic equation because the unknown is squared. So um, we may be, of course, able to solve quadratic equations by factoring, but I don't think uh, the expression on the left-hand side of this is, uh, uh, equation is going to factor easily. So we're going to have to apply the quadratic formula to find uh, the solutions to this equation. In other words, to find the x-intercepts uh, for the function f uh, that we can see here on the graph. All right, so uh, to apply the quadratic formula, remember we have to identify the three coefficients. Uh, for our quadratic equation. Uh, the leading coefficient in this equation is 1, the b coefficient is minus 5, and the c coefficient is 3. And then we can substitute uh, those three coefficients into the quadratic formula and simplify to find uh, the solutions to our quadratic equation. In other words, to find the x-intercepts uh, for um, our quadratic function f. Um, I've already now done this uh, so let me scroll down and show you uh, what these um, uh, two x-intercepts are. So I've substituted uh, these uh, coefficients a, b, and c into the quadratic formula and simplified. And um, so when you carry out this uh, uh, substitution and simplification, you end up with uh, these two solutions uh, to the quadratic uh, equation that we're trying to solve. In other words, uh, you end up with these two x-intercepts um, for the function uh, f. So one of them, uh, the smaller one is 5 minus the square root of 13 over 2. Uh, the larger one is 5 plus the square root of 13 
uh, over 2. So um, this x-intercept to the function f on the or, uh, left hand side, uh, this is 5 uh, minus uh, the square root of 13 over 2. That's its exact value. And um, this x-intercept on the right hand side, uh, its exact value is 5 plus uh, the square root of 13 uh, over 2. And so we can see that the solutions to our quadratic uh, equation, uh, sorry, our quadratic inequality, again, are going to be x values outside of these two x-intercepts because that's where the graph of the function f is above the x-axis. In other words, uh, that's where the matching outputs from the function f are greater than 0. So that uh, solution set is going to consist of uh, two intervals. Uh, the first interval is going to be from minus infinity to uh, this first x-intercept, 5 minus the square root of 13 over 2. And then the second uh, part of our solution set is um, from the second x-intercept, 5 plus the square root of 13 over 2 uh, out to positive infinity. So um, let me write down this uh, solution set now um, to the inequality. So again, the first piece of the solution set is uh, from minus infinity to our first x-intercept, which is 5 minus the square root of 13 uh, over 2. That's the exact value for the x-intercept. Um, as you can see, its approximate value here is um, about 0.7, I think, uh, looking at it, uh, its location on the x-axis. And then the second part of our solution set is, again, uh, from this second uh, x-intercept, which is 5 plus uh, the square root of 13 over 2 and then out to uh, positive infinity. And we'll combine these two pieces of our solution set to the inequality uh, by taking the union of these two intervals. So here is the, solu the complete solution uh, set to our uh, quadratic inequality, x squared minus 5x plus 3 greater than 0. Uh, that's going to be numbers from minus infinity to uh, 5 minus the square root of 13 over 2, or uh, numbers from 5 plus the square root of 13 over 2 to uh, positive uh, infinity.